Uh, today I gave a keynote about Postgres. Uh, it was really in two parts. Uh, the first part explained how the Postgres team works. Um, how did it form and, and, and particularly what three things are, are necessary uh, for a successful open source team like Postgres. Uh, the first important thing is motivation. I explained uh, how uh, to motivate individuals, why do, why do individuals volunteer their time uh, to work on Postgres. There's really uh, four main reasons. One is that uh, many of our users are, uh, find the Postgres project challenging um, and it's like a puzzle. And they have an opportunity to work on really interesting problems, often more interesting than the problems they work on at home or at the, in their work. Uh, secondly, many people have practical needs for Postgres and therefore um, are adding features that they're going to use once they're implemented. Uh, the third thing, some people get involved uh, in Postgres for personal advancement, um, learning new skills uh, that might be useful someday, and some people get involved because they're interested in helping open source and helping uh, contribute software to the, to the greater good, the greater uh, software world. Um, second part, I explained that, um, that the communication uh, problems uh, for an open source project are unique. We don't have any funding, we don't have any money, we don't have any assets, so we have to use uh, very creative ways to keep our teams working together. Um, another problem, of course, is that our teams are distributed. They're all over the world, different time zones, different uh, geographies, different cultures. So there's a number of things that we do, um, email, chat channels, uh, country-specific conferences, uh, country language-specific uh, chat channels and email lists that allow uh, our community to work together and, and to frankly never sleep. We're always, there's always somebody working on Postgres. Uh, even when North America or Europe is asleep, there's somebody in another continent, another region who's always working on it. So that's, uh, that was some of the things I've highlighted. And the third thing is the, uh, the, program, the project development. How do we do development? How do we coordinate so many people together? Um, and how do we kind of keep them all working uh, on a common project? Uh, how do we keep the quality high and how do we um, make sure that Postgres remains um, a very reliable and, and stable database that, that everyone can count on. So those are the three things that I really talked about. Um, the idea of motivation, the idea of communication, the idea of, of project development in the first half of my talk. Uh, the last five minutes I really covered um, the future of Postgres. Where do I think it's going? And I think uh, the real takeaway is that when I started with the community and I, we started Postgres, uh, it had a very limited user base, very few people used it for any production type of work. Uh, and even as of five years ago, there was still a lot of uncertainty by companies. I'm using open source, it's a database, is that really safe? What if I have a problem? There was all these uncertainties. In the past couple years, there's really seen a big change there. We've seen a lot of new dedication, companies that are willing to be very excited and very open about their use of Postgres and are willing to sort of take all their data needs and put them in Postgres and rely on it. So that's kind of a new thing uh, for us. Uh, and, and finally, um, where are we going in the next couple years? You know, when, when Linux started, um, there were a number of commercial operating systems around, uh, Linux, AIX, HPUX, uh, Solaris, and it was hard to imagine that this Linux could somehow um, overshadow those, those other operating systems. But if we look now, certainly, um, you know, AIX, HPUX, uh, Solaris are, 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 are in the decline. Uh, you know, they're, they're very marginalized now by Linux and FreeBSD and other uh, open source operating systems like Android. So I think we're now at a point where Postgres is ready to do the same, that we have the potential to uh, start to overshadow some of the larger commercial software uh, products that are developed by billion dollar companies. Um, you would think it's impossible, but you also would never have guessed that software produced by HP, IBM, and Sun could somehow, you know, be, be minimalized uh, by this open source th uh, thing called Linux. And I think we're, we're potentially looking at the same thing here uh, in the next coming years with Postgres.